Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another episode of my series, Behind the Raw. And in this episode, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes when I attempted to show you the differences that you can do from a filter point of view. I was at Falkirk Cliffs on Geocon Mountain on Valencia Island, and the light played an incredible dance with me, let's just say, until I arrived on location. I had a beautiful rainbow, got a couple of shots of that, but then I decided to kick off and show the difference that you can get with different shutter speeds by using different filters. Now I'll give you a look here when I jump onto the computer the different types of shots that I got and then I'll go into the editing process of one of those images. So thank you very much for joining. Let's go. Okay, so we're over now on my computer and I've picked one of these images here to discuss which is my 30 second shot that I took. As you can see here, I took it at F11, at ISO 100, at 16 mil. But until I kind of got to this, I just want to give you a quick look. I did uh, a number of different types of shots and here was the scene that I would have had and I took a number of exposure types as well. One with no filters at all, one with a polarizer, one with a polarizer and a uh, three stop, one with a polarizer then and a uh, 10 stop or six stop and then one with a polarizer uh, a 10 stop and a six stop as well to go for an ultra long exposure and this last image here is when my view pretty much disappeared and you can see the differences between these here as the light would have changed it was the light that brought me there in the first place anyway but there are the different types of shots that I wanted to do and what I really wanted to show was the difference here that you can get when you look at the water so looking at the water down here in the textures so you can see the the longer exposure you get a bit more movement in the water longer exposure again you get a bit more movement and I love the shapes that you have all around here and then when I went for a, a 30 second exposure which this is the final image actually I'll show you how I got to this in the editing uh, of it and I also noticed that I still have one mistake on this I didn't take my own advice so hopefully you can learn from that one as well and then finally here which was my ultra long exposure a six minute exposure um, if you haven't seen that episode actually I'll link to that episode above uh, here but anyhow yeah let's get looking at the uh, the raw file here for this image which is the 30 second shot so as I'll always do on these I'll take you through my workflow my thoughts what I like what I don't like and what I like in relation to this image here like I said a moment ago, is the movement in the water. What I don't like per se is the whole right hand side of the image here. It takes up quite a lot of real estate. Now I could have used my zoom lens and then just to zoom in to this part of the image here, uh, which I don't think I would have liked because it doesn't really give much context as you can see here. So by having at 16 mil, it gave me the opportunity to have the wider scene. So first thing I'll do is as always, I'll go in and I will check for my horizon. But as you can see here, there's no horizon to be seen because the mist that was there was coming in thick and fast. And even as I started to shoot these, the horizon was pretty much disappearing. So for here, I don't necessarily need to do anything. You can always play around with the auto. Uh, I think it doesn't really work. And even right now, I think it said there that it can't do it. And the reason why it can't do it is because it can't see a horizon. But even sometimes when I look at that just to test it, and even with a horizon, it ends up with a slanted image so don't use the auto horizon straightener if you can avoid it so for now I don't think I need to do anything in relation to the uh, horizon uh, do I want to change my crop so if I go in and look at this at a 16.9 I could 16.9 crop it here it gets pretty close to the horizon on the top but there isn't much either to see above on the sky but that's as a raw you'll see I'll be able to bring out some of that detail as well in relation to that but for now I'm just going to leave it as shot so first thing I want to look at is my histogram that's going to tell me and I've got nothing that's underexposed here if I click this there's nothing going to appear and if I click here there's nothing going to appear on that so that gives me a bit of leeway so I can say okay I want to bring the highlights on this image up so I want to make it brighter by using the highlights and that's mainly because you've got all this white area along here and plus as well on the horizon the shadows I can really play with those I've got all that play to, uh, space to be able to play with as you can see if I bring up the shadows like that you now see all this texture that's within the um, 
uh, the cliff face that's there I would never really bring it up to 100 I think I would bring it to there and I'll probably adjust that again uh, whites as I said in my previous episodes of this very very important now I can bring my whites up because if I look here at my histogram I've got a bit of room to play so I can bring my whites up here and that's going to affect all of the whites along here and then the white that's within there too on the blacks if I really crunch those blacks you can see them here with this highlight uh, shadow priority it's telling me that these are too dark now for me it doesn't necessarily matter on this because they were dark anyway but I don't ever want to go that far it's always good to have a guide and use that as your guide it is okay to have certain areas if you want them to be black if they were dark anyway full stop but for now I think within that it shows me I've exposed the image uh, correctly at 30 seconds using those filters so from a very basic point of view this is the image pretty much edited however then I can start fine-tuning so if I want to add in more contrast so if I increase my contrast here you can see that these are getting darker this is getting brighter it doesn't necessarily need much contrast and even if you look at the histogram here we are getting a tail of two sides effectively the darks versus the whites and then very little information in between and using the contrast like that it's what it's doing is stretching it out so if I was to bring it the other way here and re reduce the contrast I can actually spread out more detail within the overall aspect of the image so for me I'm going to just probably reduce the contrast here by minus 32 for now again I can come back to that when I get to my final stages I don't need to affect my my um, exposure again if I go too bright you can see this is the brightest part of the image that's here and again if I bring that back down you can see that we are getting some detail in the sky but I can affect that by using a different tool in a moment so I'm going to leave my exposure uh, as it is uh, texture doesn't necessarily need any again look you can add your texture here it's not going to change the image for me anyway I don't see it on this maybe it's something of your personal preference but it depends on the scene that you're shooting for sure uh, clarity I won't use but dehaze again I will use that and this is where it becomes really really powerful because this as you can see here is very very hazy so if I start looking and saying okay I'm going to increase this what that does is it darkens down the overall aspect of the sky but the light that you see as well here now becomes more prevalent and I can actually just make out a horizon and I can start to see the color as well because it's removing the haze that was there that I think I don't necessarily need because it gives me an endpoint within the image now for me looking at that here probably 47 might be a bit much I'll go down to 32 however if I use my trick and again I know that I have some here because I spotted some even after I'd finished my editing is rain spots or dust spots so if you take your dehaze and you whack this up now before I do that have a look I'll just reduce this to normal so have a look at the sky here and can you see is there anything that's visible to you in regards to dust spots I know that there are some there because I've done this but watch as I move my dehaze and I whack that up you'll start to see these starting to appear so you can see there is one here there is one here and there is one here very simple go into your heel tool uh, and then just click it in the center make this small bit smaller it doesn't necessarily need to be that big and then over here as well I have another so there was three dust spots within that that weren't visible now with the dehaze you can see them but obviously that image is destroyed if you were to finish it like that so you again bring your dehaze back down and what that effectively does is will get rid of all of the uh, dust spots so for me I think DH is probably or maybe 30 31 and then I can start to play with the blacks as well and try and bring up more detail but what I can also do then is I can bring in a gradient filter so with a gradient filter if you click in it here quick tip I suppose is hold down the shift key and then as you start that that's going to make sure that it always uh, remains straight so if I move my mouse left to right it's not changing so that helps me to make sure that I can keep the um, the dehaze effect level and also the size that you do with this here is the severity so the longer I bring this down the more graduated the effect so I could actually go for a very hard filter here could drag that down here and then if I was just to do for argument's sake on that you can see it is only doing on that one line whereas if I take it and I stretch it down up here I stretch it down what you have now is a more gradual effect and it's not so hard so again bringing that down here as you can see it doesn't create that straight line but what that does is it adds a real dark and moody aspect in relation to the sky now it is affecting as well on the top uh, up here you can circumvent that because you can always take this and you can turn it this way but then you get the effect 
coming across here on the overall uh, scene of the water, which I think you can take from the shot. So for me, I think what I will do with that is I will not add any of this, but what I will do effectively is I'll bring the blacks a bit further down here and I'll add a bit more contrast in relation to that sky and then a small tiny bit here. Now I've got this which is showing me that these areas here are too dark so then I can go back into this here and then I can take my shadow and I can bring that back up here or I could do the same thing by adding another uh, gradial uh, linear filter or a um, circular filter and I can adjust that area as well but for now I think I'm going to leave that like that and then the final thing is looking and saying okay do I need more vibrance now for me vibrance on this is this color here that you see so I can go in I can go in the very basics and bring up the vibrance on that that's going to affect the overall image or I can go down into a color mixer or color, color grading, sorry, uh, and I can say, okay, what do I want to affect here and what do I want to change? So if I go into the midtones, I can say, okay, I want to just increase those slightly and the shadows, I want to increase those slightly and then on the highlights, I want to be able to just slightly decrease those, I think. Oh, actually increasing them works in relation to the uh, overall sky. And from that point of view, I think when I look at this image here, it's pretty much done. Now, what I would say is I probably will end up changing this now as I look at it to a 16.9 because I don't necessarily like what's on the end here. It's not adding value. You are getting this in relation to the movement in the water. But for me, I think I'm gonna go in and go 16.9. And now do I want to decide, do I want the darkness of the sky or do I want it down here? Again, what I have on the top corner here is the edge of that cliff. So I think that's probably gonna be my cutoff point. And then now that I can see my horizon a bit further, maybe I do need to give it a slight bit of a straighten. And there is my finished image. That was a 30 second shot. And then as always, when I go into my detail, I can look and say, okay, is there any noise? Now, if I zoom in and we look at this area here, okay, I'd say, all right, okay, that's far enough away. It's, there's no noise effectively. It could be sharper, but obviously it's far enough away. It's a tiny little thing within the overall frame. But if I click in here on the denoise and use the built-in AI, we'll see then what that will do, particularly in relation to this one area. So we can say, okay, this is going to give us an enhanced look and not. So there's not much difference here in relation to it. So it tells me that the image doesn't have any noise artifacts. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it, but again, for me, I'm going to click it because I like it, because it will take away any noise that I may not see, particularly in the areas that are bright uh, and dark. And then once that's finished, it takes around maybe 40 seconds as always for it to complete that, then that would be uh, the finished image here. You could then come back and look at your histogram. It's gonna say, okay, have I got more room to play with? So can I increase my white slightly? Can I increase my highlight slightly here? Can I drop down my contrast and bring more effect into the center of the image? And then can I crunch my blacks a little bit further as well, looking to see what's going to be um, too dark. But yeah, that's behind the raw in relation to this. I'm happy with the image. I'm disappointed that the weather stopped me from what I wanted to try and do on that final image. But nonetheless, this is a phenomenal area here. And when I first arrived, I had a rainbow that was just over here as well. Um, and I got a couple of shots of that as well. They're also in the video. If you haven't seen that video, like I said, I'll link to it up here. So thank you very much as always for joining this episode, my Wednesday episode behind the raw. Hope you enjoyed seeing the backstory in regards to these images and my own thought process on the edit. If it's your first time on the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and tune in next Sunday for the final episode that I have from this trip to um, Valencia Island when I found an absolutely stunning hidden cove. It is incredible. I can't wait to share it and I hope that I'm lucky enough for you to join me. Thank you very much as always. Shlongafo.